There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do it idle wild. Car 54, where are you? Parking the car. <laughs> what do you look? What do you look? Mrs. Wallace, a Merry Christmas. Wallace? Merry Christmas, Captain. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Very funny, Mrs. Claus. A Merry Christmas to you, too. Someone watch this kid. Mr. the Precinct, this is Elliot Ness. Joe, will you sit with the other kids along? How's my boy? Let me show you how to do what Daddy does. Take this. Plug it right in here. That's it. We'll make a policeman out of you yet. Hello. 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 Okay, have it your way. He'll be a nuclear scientist. <laughs> Lucille, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Captain. You know my sister Rose and oh, my brother Al. Christmas. Yes, of course. You were at our party last year. Oh! Oh! That's fine. Cooperman. Men, wives, kids, friends. Welcome to our annual 53rd Precinct Brotherhood Club Christmas Party. And here are the co-chairman of the Entertainment Committee, Officers Gunther Tootie and Francis Muldoon. <laughs> well, on with the show, boys. Oh, wait a minute, Captain. Uh, folks, every year, the captain just introduces us, then he sits back and he enjoys himself. And we understand that you got a lovely voice. Goodness knows we hear it often enough. <laughs> but why don't you start off the show with a song? Me? Oh, no, I couldn't. No, really. Oh, no. Uh, no, folks, I really couldn't. No. No, please, but, folks, this is ridiculous. Come on, Captain, sing us a song. It's out of the question. Look, if the captain says he don't want to sing... Stay out of this, Trudy. <laughs> you all insist. You know, the happiest hour of the day to me is the first thing in the morning when I face my men for the roll call. It's the moment of truth. My gallant men, good morning. Sir, good morning. I hope you're all quite well. Quite well. And you, sir? I am in reasonable health and happy to meet you all once more. You do us proud, sir. Please. At ease. Roll call. Nicholson, here, here, Wallace, here, Schnauzer, here, Anderson, Finney, Stein, Betty, Flesher, Agawenti, O'Hara, Clark, Tutti, Miller, Tutti, Eldo, Joe, Rodriguez. Dear Captain, I am happy to report all present and accounted for. Thank you. <laughs> I am the captain of the 53rd. And a right good captain, too. I never let it show, but I think you ought to know that I'm proud of my boys in blue. He never let it show, but he thinks you ought to know that he's proud of his boys in blue. I have risen from the ranks, and for this I can give thanks to a gentle personality. My nerves are such a boon, even to the end, Muldoon. Never, never bother me. What, never? No, never. What, never? Well, hardly ever. And it'll never bother he. So give a cheer and let it feel to the hardy captain with the nerves of steel. Yes, give a cheer and let it feel to the captain with the nerves of steel. I am a captain with a gentle heart. He doesn't rule us by the book. If somebody makes a goof, I may give a mild reproof or at most just a dirty look. 
If somebody makes a goof, he may give a mild reproof, or at most just a dirty look. Bad language and abuse I never, never use. Though admittedly I would rejoice to occasionally swear and maybe throw a chair. But I never, never raise my voice. What <laughs> never? No, never. What never? Well, hardly ever. He hardly ever raised his voice. So give a cheer and give a shout for the hardy captain with a big loud mouth. Yes, give a cheer and give a shout for the captain with a big loud mouth. I've been an officer for 20 years. A man who still is in his prime. I am fearless in a fight. I am vigilant by night and by day. I'm the scourge of crime. He is fearless in a fight. He is vigilant by night and by day. He's the scourge of crime. Off duty I refuse to selfishly abuse the respect that my rank is shown. Although I've made my mark, I never, never park where it says a no parking zone. What never? No, never. What never? never. Well, hardly ever. He's hardly ever parked in a zone. So give a cheer and not the bird to the hardy captain of the 53rd. Yes, give a cheer and not the bird to the captain of the 53rd. The captain of the 53rd. Oi! That was terrific. Well, it ought to be. The boys and I have been rehearsing it during our <laughs> off hours for a whole week. Well, odd with... Fritz, what's that? Captain's orders. Oh, I forgot to mention it, Tootie, but since this is one of the few times that we have the families and friends together, I thought it'd be of great interest to them to demonstrate new police methods and techniques. You did? Yes. You see, folks, instead of bulletins and directives from headquarters, we now get recordings. Now, I'd like to show you how these work. This one just came in. Uh, this is from the Department of Public Relations, and it's called the Well-Dressed Policeman. I think you folks should know something about the inside of police work. At ease, men. The clean and uniform dress of you men reflects on the public esteem for the entire department. Will the captain please select the best-dressed officer in your precinct for our demonstration? I've taken care of that. Patrolman Fleischer. With the model before you, we can begin. Notice a cap worn squarely on the head with the center of the visor directly over the nose. The cut of lapels, the high style of the shoes. Observe that the front of the uniform jacket is made of the same material as the back of the uniform jacket, and that the buttons on the jacket sleeve are on a direct line with the seam of the pants. Notice that the lining of the hat matches the lining of the jacket and the lining of the right shoe. Also, the lining of the tie and inside pant leg are a fabric combination, as is the inside shirt collar and right shirt head. Observe that the gun is made of the same metal as the belt buckle, as are the handcuffs and back. The lining of the left shoe and the lining of the hat match the lining of the left jacket sleeve, as does the right pants pocket and sock. The sole of the left shoe matches the leather of the belt, as does the hat band and left sock. Gentlemen, presenting the well-dressed policeman. That was, that was great, Charlie. Who's next, Gunther? Ooh, ooh, it's Al Kissel, the songwriter of 53rd, and he's going to sing on the road. Wait, wait a minute. Al Kissel's on special detail tonight. He is? Hmm, just when I make up a program. This is the spot where we need a song. How about you? Okay, I'll sing on the one condition. What? You got to accompany me on your guitar. Oh, nobody wants to hear me on the guitar. <laughs> no? Well, how come you brought it? I'll get it. Folks, I, I, I'm going to sing a song for my wife, Lucille. Hi, Lucille. I sang this to her on our honeymoon. It's called, You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. And that's a great scene. Ooh, it reminds me of another great scene by a famous American who once said, I forget who he is, and I forget what he said. <laughs> sing. 
You're nobody till somebody loves you. You're nobody till somebody cares. You may be a key, possess the world in all its gold. But gold won't bring you happiness when you're alone and growing old. The world remains the same, you'll never change it. Just as sure as those stars shine above. And you're nobody till somebody loves you. So go out, find somebody to love. Hold it, folks. I fooled you. I bet you all thought I could sing. <laughs> oh, here, take over. Don't scratch it. Right. And now, Officer Leo Schnauzer will again remind us, as he does every year, of the five golden principles of brotherhood on which this club is based. Here are now the four lambs of the Precinct Goodwill Committee and our shepherd, Leo Schnauzer. <laughs> This is the torch. <laughs> this is the torch of brotherhood. What is the torch of brotherhood? The torch, the torch of brotherhood is the, the torch, torch of friendship that binds us together in brotherly love. Correct. These then are the five golden principles which make up our creed. First, loyalty. Charity. Charity. Loyalty is the first one to be loyal unto each other. Charity is first, loyalty is third. Harmony is third. Harmony is second. Fellowship is second. To let our hearts overflow with kindness. Kindness is fifth. No, kindness is fourth. Vigilance is fourth. Vigilance was cut out at the last meeting. Nobody told me. Well, if you come to the meetings once in a while. Look, who's talking? Where were you at the last meeting? I was making this torch, and I'm glad I made it heavy, because you're going to get it right in the head. Oh, yeah! Okay, if you want to do it better, do it. No, no. But now we present the 53rd Precinct Brotherhood Club Choral Group, the Whippoorwills. <laughs> Not so long ago, each man in the police in the police was respected and admired. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But today, if you go visiting your niece, visiting your niece, chances are she'll say, Hey, Ma, here come the fuzz. Come the fuzz. If you want to see just how we get the brush off, get the brush off. Watch the TV news and pictures in the Times. In the Times. There you'll only see policemen guarding Khrushchev. Guarding Khrushchev. While that lawyer Perry Mason solves the crimes. Solves the crimes. Oh, when attorneys show detectives how it's done. How it's done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Happy one. Then there's that day, thanks to extraordinary fitness. Merry fitness. That you apprehend a robber you pursue. You pursue. But the case depends upon a single witness. Single witness. Who looks around the room, then points to you. Points to you. And let's not forget that poor patrolman squawking. Patrolman squawking. About pounding beats on up and downhill grades. Downhill grades. For remember when he isn't busy walking. Busy walking. He's marching in St. Patrick's Day Parade. Day Parade. Oh, while the brass who sit reviewing have the fun. Have the fun. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. 
happy one. <laughs> and now, with great pride, I present my brother-in-law, Al Henderson, backed by popular demand, and he's going to do feats of magic, assisted by his wife, Rose. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's certainly nice to be back again this year. Oh, it certainly is. We've been looking too forward That's to it all. Rose. <laughs> I'm going to attempt a few magic feats for you, and I sincerely hope... Ooh, and I sincerely <laughs> hope that you like them. Rose, she's working a little slow tonight. She's breaking in a new girdle. <laughs> In case I ever get a chance to do these tricks on television, this is how I look. <laughs> of course, I've been doing them in the pool hall for a long time. <laughs> Rose. And now, the East Indian rope trick. better than did last year. Yes. <laughs> That's the one where my assistant climbs up to the tip of the rope and disappears. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> and now, I would like to borrow for my next trick a watch from somebody in the audience. How about Captain Block? That'll be Ooh, fine. Yeah. Captain Block. Thank you. It's got 27 jewels. But for safekeeping, we'll place the watch in the little bag. And uh, just to make sure. <laughs> the first one doesn't count. <laughs> just killing time. <laughs> I told you they'd like that. Yes. <laughs> and now... Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> That's right, 28 jewels. 27 jewels. Oh. <laughs> of course, that's not the trick, Captain. Get all set for the big one. Your watch is now back on my wrist. Well. <laughs> Assistant. Give it to the captain. Captain? Oh, I know the trick. You switched watches. You've got two of them. Two watches? Are you kidding? I've got hundreds of them. <laughs> two watches. <laughs> That's all, Rose. That's all, Rose. And now, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, hold it. Our party this year has established a new record. Our official bachelor. Francis Muldoon has brought along his girlfriend. Now, Gunther, she's not my girl. Don't embarrass Bonnie. Oh, they don't like to meet her. Maybe if we give her a hand, she may come up here, huh? <laughs> don't they make a nice couple? Really? Calling me your boyfriend? Oh, I don't mind. Actually, folks, she's not my girl. And I'm not her boyfriend. I'm not her steady boyfriend. Actually, I'm not her boyfriend at all. She, she has another boyfriend, and now she's going to tell us about him. I'm waiting for the man that I adore. J'attends aussi pour l'homme que j'adore. What shall I call him when my man appears? Sweetheart, lover, angel, or just dear? Or shall I call him more chéri, my life, my flame? I think I'll call him Irving, because Irving is his name. <laughs> Irving, whenever he appears, birds sing. They keep on twittering, Someone's in love with you. 
Irving, whenever he is near, bells ring. To me, I'm only a plaything. But what can I do? He's just an ordinary guy, no Superman, no whiz. Why, in a crowded subway, I can't tell which hands are his. <laughs> Irving, 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 I'm so in love with you. <laughs> love is a funny thing. L'amour est un object comique, nicht wahr? <laughs> I always dreamed of the kind of man who would one day steal my foolish, foolish heart. He would be tall and dark and handsome and in the Teamsters Union. <laughs> I guess that's every girl's dream, n'est-ce pas? <laughs> then along came Irving. How can I describe him? His, his face, it's... It's like the United Nations. <laughs> Everything is there. It just can't quite seem to get together. <laughs> but so what? He's my Irving. My man. He's not the kind of guy you'd see in any collar ad. But Irving in a bathing suit. Pretty bad. <laughs> I'm so in love with him. When I look in Irving's eyes, my foolish heart can't take it. His one eye says, come hither, but the other can't quite make it. <laughs> it's not that Irving's wall-eyed, but of Irving it's been said. He can watch an entire ping-pong game without once turning his head. <laughs> Whenever he appears, birds sing. They keep on twittering, Irving. Someone's in love with you. Thank you, Bonnie, for helping out at our party. Well, I guess this wraps it up for the night, folks. Hold it, hold it. Folks, how about a hand for the co-chairman? Oh. Another year, and Tony and Muldoon are still together. That makes ten years, doesn't it, fellas? Ten years. I can't believe it. Seems like yesterday. You know, teams change partners every six months, but you two go on and on together. What's the secret? Should we tell them? Let's. We belong to a mutual Admiration Society, my partner and me, oh, we belong to a mutual admiration society. I say he's got that certain air. He looks so handsome way up there. I say that he's a natural wit. I claim it's just the opposite. I think he dresses nice and neat. He's the Bob Rumble of the beat. And we go on like that till day is gone. We belong to a mutual admiration society. I think he's absolutely top. I think he's king of all the cops. I like his voice so deep and rich. He even snores in perfect pitch. The only fighting that we do is just who likes who more than who, and it appears we we'll are like this for years. We belong to a mutual admiration society. He's got a heart that's pure as gold. And after him, they broke the mold. I like the things he's got to do. I love the way he says, ooh, ooh. We're called out, he can walk a beat. He still has arches in his feet. And so we roll all day on our patrol. My father and me, oh, we belong to a mutual admiration society. Merry Christmas. 53rd Precinct, Sergeant Riley. 53rd, Anderson. Where did that happen? Yes, Lieutenant. Corner of Porter and Shot. Four men already. There should be two cars there shortly. 
Did you get the license number? Okay. There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do it I go wild. Car 54, where are you? 